Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial and uh, I'm Maxime from uh, DV Agency and today we are going to check how to recreate this beautiful liquid distortion uh, slider and uh, yeah, I'm going to switch some slides just to make sure you see the effect here on the, on the slide transition. You can see also uh, a tilt effect on the text. The text is moving when my mouse is, mov is moving and also this liquid animation on the image itself. Okay, so, so these are the three animations we want to recreate. We are going to use uh, two libraries, two external libraries to complete this work, which, is, uh, which are uh, PixieGS and JSAP. And uh, just to make our lives easier, we are going to use a custom library that will manage uh, all these parameters for us. So I created this test page for now with some dummy content. And we are just going to import the JSON file inside this page. If you are watching uh, this tutorial from YouTube, make sure to check the description and there will be a link to my blog post where you can uh, download for free the, the JSON file and import in your DV website. So let's just click on the portability settings, import. Let's just uncheck replace existing content and I'm going to drag it drag the JSON file into the choose file and import in the DV Builder layout. Okay, let's just wait. And now we have our slider imported. I'm just going to check to invert the slider and the section. So the slider will be on top of the dummy content and I'm going to save it. Okay, let's just check the front end now see if everything is working. I'm going to refresh. Okay, let's see if it's working now. Okay, now we have the slider and the animation is working. If I click to next, it's working as well. Okay, everything looks fine on the front end. Let's come back to the back end and let's see how it works. So I'm not going to, to dive into too much details because I already wrote the blog article. You can find all the observation I made in the inside the article, but let's just check the structure really quick. So we have an HTML code inside the code module in DB, and we have two basic uh, HTML markup. The first one is, is for the slider. As you can see, there is a div with an ID uh, which is RGB kinetic slider, which is exactly the name of the of the uh, JavaScript library that we are going to use to recreate this effect. And the second HTML markup, if, if the navi navigation arrows, they are not arrows, but prev and next buttons, but just so we understand each other. And the first one, of course, is the pre previous button and the second one is the next one. Okay, if we go to the uh, JavaScript file, we are going to see that we are going to import quite a lot of script here. We are going to import the images loaded, which manage the status of the image loaded when you load the page. JSAP for the transition, the PixieGS um, library, which manage all the transformation on the images and the filters. And finally, the main uh, library that we are going to use, the RGB kinetic slider that we are going to see in a moment. So uh, since we are using um, a custom, custom script, custom JavaScript, as you may know, it, it won't run inside the visual builder, builder view. So if we just close everything, you can see if I click on the next page here, you would just do nothing, just an error, <laughs> actually. Okay, it's, it's back. And the uh, background image here is static one that I placed using CSS. It's not actually generated by our, our JavaScript uh, library. You can change it in the code I will show you in a, mo in a moment. 
how it works. But uh, just so you know that, that the background, uh, sorry, the, um, the backend uh, view is not really reflecting the animation that we have on the front of the front end, okay? So uh, let's uh, go back in our JavaScript file. And the first thing that you want to do when, uh, when you imported all the scripts is to set your images and your content. Uh, as you see on the front, as the front end, each slide has an image, a, title, a title, which in this case is art, and the, sub and the subtitle, which in this case is my oxygen. So um, we, we, do, we do set uh, two constants, which are one is images, and separately you have the text, which is a content, which the first argument is a, is a title, and the second one is a subtitle, okay? So if you want to import your own images, you need to replace each of these uh, URLs with your own image. Okay, just for the text, for the test, and just to preview how it works, let's just switch the last image and put it in the first one. Let's just add it for now here. Okay, and let's just create a new title and subtitle. Okay, let's just duplicate it and we made a test title. And here, beautiful uh, subtitle. Okay, let's just save for now. And once it's done, let's just refresh. Okay, now we have our new image and the main one test title and beautiful subtitle, and it works. Okay, so this is a way to uh, switch your own images and to create your titles. Really easy. Um, the custom code that I inserted here, the first one is to manage the full width on uh, mobile phones, just to make sure it always cover the entire uh, viewport and um, yeah on, on mobile on mobile phone there are some uh, jump effects that we want to avoid due to the to the navigation bottom bar of the, of the mobile browsers so we can't really use a uh, hundred uh, vh which would be the viewport viewport height and uh, we are forced to use uh, this JavaScript function just to make sure that it always cover the, the entire screen on mobiles. And if you want to, to have more detailed information uh, on this topic, you can just read uh, the blog article. Uh, and I linked uh, a really interesting uh, article uh, there. OK. And the, the second section of the, of the custom code is uh, the, the slider initialization. And as you see, we, we, we import our images and our content and the text. And we are applying uh, a, a variety of, of settings here. I won't, of course, uh, describe each one because I commented on the code itself. As you can see, you can just make changes and see how all the front end change based on on these uh, on these settings. But just to to make sure these uh, these uh, settings are applied and are default from the from the RGB kinetic slider library. Just one thing I want to I want to bring your attention on is the last section, the text setting. And uh, there you can uh, set your Google fonts. You can set uh, the, the color of the font, the size of the font. And you have, of course, um, a way to make it uh, responsive on mobile device. So the size of the, te the, the title on desktop is 125. Actually, I'm not sure if, if it reflects the pixel or anything, or it's just a, a base value. But of course, if you increase it, 
it will increase the font size and if you decrease it will make it will, it will make it smaller uh, just make uh, some tests on uh, on your real website to know uh, which value is the best for you and uh, below we have the mobile text uh, size and so you, you can adjust the text size based on the device and the same for the subtitle color and size okay so uh, this is an overview on how to change the images and the text and it should pretty be it. oh yeah let's just open the css it, it's really basic because all the animation are, are controlled by by javascript uh, file so we just use css to place the um, the slider correctly and to be full width and full height and uh, uh, we are styling the the previous and next buttons. And just to make your life easier, we created some CSS variables here. You don't have to dive into the, site, the CSS code if you don't, if you, are, if you are not familiar with CSS, that's not a problem. Just, uh, you, you, you may want to just change the value here, which the color of the, the text color of the arrows, the background color of the arrows, and the same on over. So for example, if we want to change this background color from black to red we will just change here red and it will directly apply it if we save and check on the front end in a second okay let's refresh our button has our buttons uh, background color is now red and the over background color is still the same okay and you can just change this value according to your to your brand and your images and um, this should be pretty easy okay let's go back to oops missed this one. okay let's go back to black okay guys i think i covered everything if you are if you are willing to get more information about it uh, make sure to read the, the blog content and check the description of the video to get the link and um, and yeah it's everything if you have any uh, questions or any doubt about it uh, just comment below the video and i make sure to respond to you as fast as possible okay bye bye guys